Okay, so uh, we've, we've done some data collection already this first couple of weeks, but we haven't really done any analysis or written them up yet, right? We haven't really talked about graphing and all this and that. So this, first, this lab this week is really just to begin to, you know, low bar, just start to move our muscles and start to um, make sure we can all graph, right? So one of the key learning outcomes from our class, one of the key things we're going to be doing more and more from, from this week on is working on visualizing data understanding data, interpreting data, right? But in particular, um, visualizing quantitative data. And so uh, for this exercise, um, as with most of these exercises, is this, you're going to collect some data, and you are going to uh, do some interpretation, and then you're going to create a graph and submit that graph typically into a, some kind of PDF, that graph or multiple graphs into one PDF, and that's what you're going to upload for the assignment. Cool. Uh, you are going to do a professional graph. Right? Now everybody here is a senior, so you guys theoretically have all taken all the classes, and you guys are great. And all that. you can use whatever tool you want to generate your graphs that you can make a professional uh, a figure with, meaning you can control it. Right? If you want the a, a dot plot and you want to make that darker or bigger or redder or whatever, you can do that. Um, uh, many of you will tend to want to run to Excel. Excel is a wonderful program for, for moving around tabular data, for, for entering data, for like organizing stuff, cleaning stuff up, as is Google Sheets. Right? But they're not really kick butt graphing tools, right? So um, totally fine to use Excel to organize your data, totally fine to use Google Sheets, Sheets to organize your data, kind of get it set up and you know, da da da, da. But um, generally speaking, they're, they're, they're crap for making really professional scientific visualizations. Um, and that's not an attack on Excel. They're, they weren't designed to do this, right? They're designed to be an accounting ledger. And that's why they do that stuff really well. So what does that mean? That means you, we're agnostic as to what tool you use to make your figures. Um, uh, so, so uh, well, let me just ask. So, so I, I think I know the answer. But so how many people have taken um, uh, intro environmental stats with, with Dr. Fairfax? Oh, crap. You guys are great. Then you guys will probably want to use R. So we've been trying to fold R more and more into our stuff. Oh, the like people all just said like, oh, they kind of got all awkward in their seats and shifted and shifted a lot. I saw. So there's so um, so R is an option, right? R is a free open source can run on any platform. Can uh, whatever you want to use. If you want to use Python, you can use Python. If you want to use Plotly, as I as I reference in this particular example, you're more than welcome to. Um, it, it's it's just Excel not great for graphing. Invariably, someone in here or a couple people are going to make their graphs with, with Excel. And I look at it and I go, ah, that kind of sucks. This isn't good. Make this thing bigger. And then you're going to be kind of quiet and go, mm, okay. And then like the next one will come around and I go, hey, whoa, we talked about this. How come your, your whatever axis is like this? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like no, you got to make it bigger. Make the font bigger or, or whatever it is. Uh, okay, and then like week three will come around, and I was like, D "What's up, dude? Like, it's still why don't you like? Oh, Doctor, can you show me how to do it? Yeah, okay, sure. Let's open your program. Let me help you do with that. And you open Excel, and I'm like, oh, dude, like that sucks because Excel is really you. Is is it possible to use Excel to do um, rigorous kick butt scientific visualizations theoretically? But it takes a crap load of time." And it and it it just and it almost always doesn't work well. So you're all adults. You do what you want to do. But I strongly encourage you guys to use R, use Plotly, use some of these other modalities, Tableau, um, um, whatever, whatever your your thing that you've used that you've come to be familiar with in your previous classes. That's fine. That's fine. Um, questions about that? Now people are all like stressed out now. Like, oh my God, I said R. I said R and everybody got super angry and tense and now their backs are starting to hurt. And 
we really need a break now, Dr. A. Can we have a break now? Okay. Um, so, so um, yeah, so for several years, we've been using Plotly, and it seemed to work pretty well. It's starting to, starting to get a little bit more clunky. Last year, in particular, it started to get a little clunky. And so, um, so it's still fine to use, but, but again, I think, I think uh, R is probably the best if you guys have that background. And it might take you a week to remember how to do something or this or that, but, but really, um, uh, this is a skill, right? So when you guys graduate, you're going to need to be able to do this. Um, my son is flying, uh, uh, making drone maps for um, the lab that he's working with. And, the, and yesterday, the professor's like, hey, go like do this, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, crap. And so, you know, so sometimes it's like, it's like one of those kind of things in the, in the middle of the night or late in the day. They're like, hey, go make this. Other cases, it'll be important for a public presentation, whatever. We need to be comfortable with being able to visualize data. And so it's not about torturing you guys or whatever. It's about getting these skills, right? So that's what we're working on. So in this case, this lab is uh, you're just going to make two figures, just two figures, put them in one PDF and submit them. So this first one is uh, about also the idea of querying. You find the data. You find the data. So, so all the only thing here is to tell me something interesting about coastal versus inland populations. That's it. I don't have a hypothesis I want you to prove. I don't just find something compelling to tell. Cool? Everybody looks very quiet. Does that make sense? So you do two figures. So this first one is about housing data. And so if I click this link right here, it's going to take me to a dialogue for this National Ocean Economics Program. And so I can. I can uh, download the data. I, I can I can say oh, I want all the U.S. What's going on here? All the all this. Oops. I did not. I did not let me, okay, there you go. So United States. I can pick like just California. I can do. I can do whatever, right? So I can go through here. I can pick all these different things, and then I can download the data. So you all can query the data. When it comes to coastal management, it's one of these huge, broad topics that that there's all kinds of wonderful data out there, but it's not always super obvious. We need to get a little bit comfortable in looking for data ourselves sometimes, right? So not everything's gonna be packaged in a GIS, not everything's gonna be packaged in some one place, but we'll start with this. So that one's, you're gonna query it and, and find some interesting patterns there in terms of housing, housing data. This next one is about uh, uh, growth. Let's talk about city growth. And so for this one, this one's, this, uh, so that one first example is you guys look for it yourself. This one to make it a little bit easier. It's our first lab. Just click this bad boy, and the data is all here. I've I've already prepped the data for you, and this data is uh, as I scroll here. Where am I looking? Oops, sorry. Here it is right here. So this data is all the da all the raw data that I pulled from the census. But just click over to the select cities, and here I've organized the data based on uh, year and based on different uh, areas of um, uh, large, large urban areas of California. And the number on top is uh, the number on top is um, how many people? And this is, I think, in. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Yeah, so there you go. 731 in San Diego in 1860, and it grows from there. Uh, so this data is for you guys to use. However, even this data needs to be cleaned up. So almost everything you get needs to be tweaked. So for example, most of the programs, the tools that you guys will use, and I just want to make sure we're, we're clear on this. Hold on. Uh, wait, where is it? Um, oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, I don't have it called up. Uh, when, when we export that first data from the website, whenever you export that, it'll probably come out, the default is a CSV, a comma-separated variable file. 
in which case there'll be some header that'll tell you what the what the name of the variable is, right? Year, age, height, whatever the heck it is. And then and then going down in the rows are, are the data. So the data per year, the data per individual, whatever the however it's organized, right? Everybody with me on that? You can suck that into just about any program and you're probably okay. With data that look like this or or this, that doesn't work, right? Because if I suck this in, it's not gonna know what to do. If I suck this in, it's not gonna know what to do. If I suck this in, um, the default is many of these programs will look at this and say uh, and try to do some work for you. And they're gonna say, ah, oh, here's Fresno. So, so this column is Fresno data, and it's gonna list it looks numeric. So it's numbers, 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 right? But then there's this gap. So what's going on there? So that can cause us some problems. The other thing that can cause us some problems is if there's if there's text written below here, below that first first row. That text will oftentimes taint it. And so the computer will then think that this is all string variables, you know, letters as opposed to numbers. And that gets us into problems. So Whenever we're doing this, the workflow is, hey, let me go find my data, let me explore. Okay, this, this might be my data. Download it. Before I immediately try to graph my program, I'm gonna stare at my data file. Hey, does this make sense? What is this? What, what, is, what, what, are, the, what are the units here? Okay, that's, that's number of people, that's people per square mile, you know, what is it, right? So, okay, I got that. And maybe I need to manipulate this. Maybe I need to come in and, and sort of turn this into two files or delete these rows or do whatever. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna prep that data. And then, once I've found the data I want, I know it's what I want, I understand the source of it, what the variables are, I've gotten it prepped, then that's the point I wanna suck it into R or suck it into to Plotly or whatever to generate my figures. Those steps will save you a lot of headache. I can say it again, do those steps. Look at the data, qualitatively look at it. Is it meet what, I meet? Is it meet what I'm talking about? Then look at the formatting. Is it formatted in a way that makes sense to a, a dumb program that's just going to be looking at this thing? And then suck it in. Question? Um, yeah, so that's the upper one. Is that right here? Uh, it's up to you guys. It's up to you guys. But, but sure. I mean, that, 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 that's, an easy, that's an easy way. So, so all this exercise is doing is let's start to do some graphing. So that's really the goal here. Make, make a... a, a understandable graph that's telling us something about people inland versus coastal.